that's why I'm happy to have people like Gazi here of Empire and uh, just a lot of movers and shakers in, in the music, art, fashion, and tech world just converging in a way never before seen. Um, it reminds me very much of like the uh, MP3 era, USB era, all of that. And yeah, this is, we're back at Kazaa, LimeWire, BearShare, Napster, Pirate Bay. Uh, apparently, I never did anything Pirate in terms Bay, of... man, I forgot about that one. This is Silk Road, whatever it is. It's you got know? a lot of software on there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've definitely... I've luckily not seen any DMCA takedown notices in Web3 yet. <laughs> but uh, Gazi, I'd be curious of, like, you know, this, this space has what I would consider a lack of censorship and an abundance of ownership. Which, uh, you know, with social media as it currently stands, artists don't really have as much of a voice as they'd like because of algorithms and things that are out of their control. Um, I don't know. What, what are you most excited about in terms of anything in the space from metaverses and virtual experiences to um, bridging virtual to physical, um, you know, digital asset usage in unique ways? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say all of it. The whole entire spectrum going from uh, blockchains and, and smart contracts and what that can do for us in terms of royalty accounting, uh, transparency, <clears throat> you know, side artist agreements, contracts, publishing splits, things of that nature on the music side in terms of like infrastructure. And then all the way over to things like utilizing NFTs. Uh, in terms of either selling art, selling exclusive tracks, airdropping material to people, um, providing utility for things as you know, such as uh, redemption codes for discounts on merch. Or right now, I'm working on an NFT drop where we're uh, gonna uh, re-airdrop all of Money Man's NFTs by updating the smart contract and add a QR code to it. So when he goes on his next tour, you can swipe over. And instead of selling meet and greets uh, at a higher tier, all the previous NFT holders can just sh swipe over, show it. We're teaming up with a company called RSBFI um, that allows you to basically just redeem all the codes and uh, create a VIP list on the way in. So, <clears throat> you know, and then all the way into the metaverse, we have the, a pretty substantial metaverse artist who prefers to say he's not an avatar that's an artist, but rather an artist that is an avatar. And I understand that because uh, I've known him for about four years and he showed me what he was doing about four years ago. Um, and I thought the music was really compelling and I wasn't sure if the world was ready yet for the idea of an avatar on Instagram showcasing music, but I thought the music was compelling. So we started doing distribution with him about four years ago. Uh, his name's Teflon Sega. Uh, he's evolved pretty substantially in the last four years. I think he's amassed almost 100 million streams on his music across the DSPs. Uh, and he's pretty become a pretty substantial metaverse artist, sold out his first NFT drop. Uh, he does all his shows on a platform called Wave. Um, so it's a broad spectrum. Yeah, I'm excited about all of it. I think uh, with change comes opportunity, and I want to be on the front end of it. So I'm, I'm with all of it. That's really exciting. Sorry, that was an elaborate answer. No, I gave you yeah. a burrito of technology. <laughs> you just unpacked it, and that's, that's dope. And wrap it in Teflon and put it in the metaverse and you know, it re Teflon, replace yeah. my CPA and entertainment lawyer all in a smart contract. I'm yeah. <laughs> I don't think it replaces the CPA. <laughs> yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One feature that Spatial recently launched is token gating. So we mm. see some artists and performers that are dropping NFT collections or when they know they're having an event, their tickets will be NFTs. And so mm -hmm. it works both as a proof of attendance or as a entry pass. 100%. And spatial rooms can, um, if you connect your wallet, it can admit or reject entry to a room. Mm -hmm. And so they can have these, whether it be a meet and greet or a concert or any type of event. Um, so Yeah, I think um, I was talking to one of my developers last night, and we also want to add a fiat gate. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that might be the most might not be the most popular thing in, in the blockchain world, but there's still such a large subset of people that don't understand how to pay for an NFT or connect a wallet or might be weary of connecting a wallet as people are getting robbed and scammed yeah. out of their, what, the assets in their wallet. So 
we're, we're going to add like a fiat gate, hopefully on our next NFT drop where somebody can just punch in a traditional t credit card. If that makes them feel more comfortable, because I think we're just, you know, the world is all about format changes, right? So whether that was beta and VHS to DVD and then ultimately to like things like Netflix or whether that was tapes to CDs to MP3s to streaming or now we're going from cash to checks to credit cards and then eventually to PayPal, Venmo, Cash App and now we're in crypto, right? So there's still a lot of people that are weary or there's... a, a most people just don't even understand. Yeah, the change happened so fast. You know, some people yeah. it's just weren't paying attention. So telling somebody they got to buy an NFT, but you also have to set up a MetaMask or a trust wallet, and you have to connect it. Mm -hmm. It's it might be too much for some people. But if I say, hey, here's a website, you could purchase this art. Mm -hmm. I don't even need to call it an NFT to to make it more uh, easier for some people to digest. And you you can come buy this here and yeah. just I think punch in your credit card. Mm -hmm. The, it like, might be the bridge, you know? To, to simplify it and make it less complicated for people, you can literally showcase... I mean, I use a lot of visual uh, references and metaphors to, to break it down, but, you know, even a candy bar. You know, mm -hmm. you have the wrapper that's on the outside, but you have the other stuff that's on the inside that has the ingredients that makes it taste a certain way, right? So, you know, obviously it's much more than pretty pictures. It's technology that's embedded into something else. So literally anything can be an NFT, but that doesn't mean everything needs to be an NFT. Right. Right. Everything doesn't need to be um, strictly this or that. And I think that these definitions that we place on things puts them in boxes. And I think the whole part of this space that has us on the forefront of the movement is excitement for unboxing and unlearning mm -hmm. and going back to move forward and really breaking the ceilings, breaking the barriers, breaking the walls, which also forces people to be a little bit more open-minded, and you have to be. It's sink or swim. COVID literally taught everybody mm -hmm. very harsh lessons in terms of nobody having their back and there not being any safety net, and you have to adapt. And so that versatility that this is naturally teaching people is one of the many reasons why I gravitate to it and appreciate it so much because I like – being a student, I like being a teacher, and I love the fact that this facilitates both of those things at the same time, and it follows a, um, it, it's inherently and intrinsically valuable from the get-go, and that's the, the, the immutable part of the blockchain and something existing forever, like, we're building legacy, all right, mm -hmm. we're building in perpetuity, we're, we're building for tomorrow, and if you are confident in what you're producing you should be okay with putting it out there and having that stamp forever and with metaverses and education i think that's kind of the next the next generation of extremely valuable um use cases that we've yet to see because um if you think about it already people were taking zoom calls in order to stay out of offices and out of schools in order to pick up what was being put down and continue to move forward on their track so now with everybody and every train off its tracks, we've decided that we want to create a new lane. And I think that's just, it's so progressive and beautiful. And I think that's also why a lot of us uh, are, are here and enthusiastic about it all. Mm. Sorry for that monologue. No, that was beautiful. <laughs> and I think that it was really interesting where you started from, you know, you know, we love NFTs, but not everything has to be an NFT, but then we are, you know, those of us who are at NFT NYC believe that there is a substantial part of the future that is that NFTs are building and this community is building and the blockchain requires the blockchain. Um, and especially as a metaverse platform, uh, you know, when we're com when it comes to what is and it is not an NFT, to some degree, we give people choice like your access token can be an NFT or not your space itself, the environment itself can be an NFT or not your outfit can be an NFT or not. <laughs> and so there's so many layers to it when it comes to recreating the, like, well, not the real world, because we hope that people, you know, expand their minds past building, rebuilding the real world. But uh, as far as, you know, I'm interested in, in your industry, what you are um, thinking about as far as what do you make NFTs and what do you not make NFTs? I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> I haven't thought about what's possible or not possible because I think that immediately puts it 
glass ceiling on it. Right. So I don't really, my brain doesn't really operate Impossible like that. Impossible is nothing, man. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm really like a tinker, like, and I think of a lot of ideas on the fly. And um, I've talked to a lot of people about this, and I always tell them the greatest gift that I have in my life is that I own my company and that I'm not employed by somebody else. So I have the autonomy to come up with an idea at four in the morning, walk into the office the next day and start executing it with my developers. And we're a music company that's also half software. So I have a significant development team. And I, I'm not a coder by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I have a tech background and I spent mm -hmm. a lot of time in Silicon Valley. So my brain is kind of wired half creative and half technical, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just come up with a lot of stuff on the fly. Um, th for example, um, on Sunday, we have a pretty significant uh, party that we do once a year for BET Awards. And it's a brunch that we do once a year. Um, and it's usually all the who's who of the music business in LA pop through, like editorial people from DSPs to radio people to a lot of popular artists. Um, and it's a private event, it's hard to get in. Right. You can't get in unless you get an invite. And even when we send you the invite, we don't even tell you the location until the day of. So I'll get text messages for days at a time. Where's the location? Are they really gonna send it back to me? You know, I wanna be at, the... so uh, I'm getting those texts already this morning and parties this Sunday. <laughs> so yesterday I decided um, Money Man's dropping his album tonight. It comes out tonight. Um, and he's a very popular in the crypto world. And uh, we're gonna have a section of the party dedicated to his album release. So I called uh, my guy and I was like, hey, uh, let's mint, spin up a token, um, you know, like a, a coin, but mm -hmm. it's an NFT, but a coin. I got an idea and he said, what? I said, put our logo on the front, put Money Man's logo on the back, make it spin, 3D, make it just look cool. Put a song under it, one of the songs that's coming out on the album and let's mint 15, and these 15 coins will give you access to the party for general mm -hmm. public. People who have, would never be able to rub, rub shoulders with these individuals will have access to this party. Spin it up, let's go. So uh, we did the whole entire thing in the last like 24 hours while we were at NFT and Y. We've already spun up a coin. Um, I just tweeted it on my way here to this. Wow. And um, we'll probably sell out in the next few hours and yeah, better get on, on my phone. Sunday we'll have. Yeah, quick, grab your phone. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've already created the redemption <laughs> uh, format for it with the uh, with the. Um, there's already like a whole rollout to it. So and and during that process, I called him and I said, "Okay, this was great. We did this really fast, but on the on the next one, how do we do it so that people don't have to connect the wallet if they don't understand how to do that?" Mm -hmm. And so um, we were already on the phone while I was driving here, figuring out the uh, fiat component. Um, and we already have a couple people in mind on who to do it with for the next one. But essentially, next party I can do the same thing. Put Empire logo on the front. Whoever artists I'm showcasing at the next party, put their logo on the back. And then you can start to create a collection of NFTs that have Empire affiliated brands. Um, and people follow our brand pretty, pretty closely, especially a lot of our artists. So um, it's just that ability to create on the fly. It doesn't have to be $2 million worth of sales in 24 hours. I'm a big believer in incremental gains, um, incremental, incrementally quantifying and capturing culture so that a year or two from now you look up and you're like, hey, I got thousands of holders mm -hmm. of various NFTs, but really they all sit under one umbrella and all of them can be used for one case use or many of them can be divided for different uses I have a question yeah. about, so if I buy this coin and I can go to this party, mm -hmm. then what happens if I resell it? If I go to the party and then I put it up for sale? I mean, you could, because you can commemorate that. It's just like yeah. if I went to the championship game seven of a Warriors mm -hmm. and then I sold my ticket. A lot of people see value in the physical right. ticket, right? It's a collectible. So it was a collectible. Like, you know, I own the Empire coin for BT Brunch 2022 which commemorated Money Man's release and Money Man's, you never know, like the Money Man has hit records. We just right. certified one of his records triple platinum, right? So, so a song off this album might go platinum and now you own the coin from the party for when we commemorated the release. But here's the other thing. 
there's nothing to say that in six months, a year, 30 days, that I might add more utility to that NFT, right? Mm -hmm. So when we dropped Money Man's first NFT was last Christmas, and we gave away a hoodie. Um, and then we did it again. We did it, uh, excuse me, on Thanksgiving, and we did it again on Christmas. And when we did it on Christmas, I made a unique colorway for the hoodie. It was red. And then we were touring like two months later. And when we went on tour, I seen kids running up to the front of the stage showing us that they had the red hoodie because we only gave away a hundred of the red hoodie. Um, and then what we did during the tour was we dropped an exclusive EP during the tour. And one of the songs that didn't make the EP, I airdropped to everybody who was a holder of the first two NFT drops. So I gave them an exclusive song and then I gave them another song that was 48 hours prior to release with an exclusive NFT. So during the show, I see a kid run to the front of the stage, swipes his phone, is screaming Money Man at the top of his lungs, and he's holding his phone up to show him that he has the exclusive NFT. And this is like in Memphis. Wow. Right? This is like deep in the trenches in Memphis. Right. You don't wouldn't, quote unquote, expect to see that. So you start to see that the culture and the the thought process is starting to permeate and penetrate places that, you know, like nooks and crannies that normally most people wouldn't be able to get to. Um, and so we've formed a pretty formidable team in how we're rolling out a lot of things in the next six or 12 months. And I'm kind of using him as a catalyst to showcase to other artists, like, look, you guys are from the same segment of community. If he could do this, so can you. I think, yeah. I think it's an eye-opening experience for a lot of people. The so the people that hold the wristbands forever, the people that keep their ticket stubs and the posters on the wall, yeah. that's it. And the people that have tattoos, imagine every time, every year that laughs that you have that tattoo on you and you can continue to access certain things. It's kind of the same way. And like I've, I've thrown raves and undergrounds and after hours in LA, New York, Miami and beyond until 6 a.m. for the longest and never released the address until a couple hours before and always had... Uh, some form of token or a membership card in order for mm -hmm. you to get in and get out and you could pass it to friends or a special code and you know there wasn't a way for me other than email blast or sms or mms text to mm -hmm. reward the people and so what i've been doing with new friendship tech is kind of what you just said in terms of like you know we all can agree i'd say that um you know, certain information and access to certain knowledge uh, gets to people of color and marginalized communities and minorities a lot slower. And so with New Friendship Tech, um, I just uh, linked up with former uh, creative director at Google named Logic, and uh, he's also part of your conduit. He has events going on here as well. In fact, I'm really proud of like seven people that I have as key opinion leaders in this space are all off doing their own events right now. And it's That's the amazing. most fucking beautiful oh. thing yeah, to amazing. see because we all started on Clubhouse and we all started on education and like, it's beautiful. But the, the point was that the during these making babies. Yeah. I mean, during NFT LA, I felt that it just was inaccessible. It didn't highlight artists. Marketplaces without art have nothing to sell. They're not donating or pouring back into the pot. Meanwhile, the cultural purveyors and creators are in the streets, in the trenches, in the conversation, not corporate XYZ ABC that's on the mic, on the stage, who paid for a slot. So I basically said that every day of this conference, I'm going to run a program from 6 o'clock until 2 a.m. That's open bar, that's free food, that's no cover the entire duration. It's inclusive, it's accessible, it's diverse, it's dynamic, it's unique. You're going to want to be here. And not a single person has asked me for a fucking penny. And I'm out of pocket with everything and don't need to make a penny. And the people that take the jump and take the risk to this unknown thing that embeds and integrates education plus live performances plus meet and greets and artist workshops and all of this for free over and over back to back to back to back why even spend four hundred six hundred four thousand six thousand dollars for a ticket to this thing to sit to hear people speak for five minute mm -hmm. increments for a 30 minute interval like impact you know right. and i think that's socially responsible for the space i think that is leading by example i think that's showing that you know you can do this too here's my template this is working in the open and public and transparency so i'm showing all of this stuff to people and we brought it from la after a successful three-day run and brought it uh to chicago after 
and in LA we had Foster Damas, Luna George, uh, Spotty Wi-Fi. Help me, I I will bring it there in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, and, and then in Chicago, we, we took over this mall in downtown Chicago and had NFTs and QR codes across the entire ceiling of this mall, right across from wow. Tom yeah. Ford and yeah. Balenciaga and all them panels inside. And that was a future gallery. Did a dinner. Everybody meet each other. And you all get an NFT upon leaving. And if you take this to day two or day three, you're going to get more. And then mm. you don't know what's going to happen after that. But I might just take over Lollapalooza with a side stage that only the holders of this exclusive right. thing get access to. Yeah. And then here we are in New York doing the same thing. And I just think that that's that's the way people need to look at the game. It's It's bigger picture people that are progressive with their productions and their interest in expanding the space and making it fair and equitable like there's no reason for even gender wage inequality anymore because you can showcase that this person's getting paid the same as that person mm -hmm. without revealing either person's identity and you know it's it's Just like glass door right. it's been fucking on glass amazing door? <laughs> yeah i mean access been on glass door? yeah Equality and accessibility is something that's so important in the real world and also something that's spatial we are a free platform for a reason. We don't sell land. Yep. Anybody can jump in and make a space for free and host an event. And it is something that's so important and we have seen so much growth because of it because not only are we teaching people about the metaverse and the possibilities and making this tool really easy, but the barrier to get into some of these other platforms that we very much respect, but we're like, it's expensive. well, like why? Like, <laughs> why are you selling? such expensive plots for space that is unlimited and unoccupied and, and unoccupied and yeah. spatial we have a vibrant community and i think are we have such a vibrant community that's always in spatial always building always hosting events because we have it free and we have it open and we're doing a lot of development to make it even more social and bubbling is the word i want to use <laughs> i think samsung being with spatial is like a very like Big perfect collaboration and statement and cosign and stamp mm -hmm. because you know you talk about advancement and growth of technology and re um, reshaping the way that we move and operate in the same way as we used to print up our maps and right. we used to use yellow pages white pages etc um to have such a powerful big brother big sister behind you and also saying that, like, we really, we, we support this enough to say it's safe, you know. Um, I, I think that's a huge statement and a, a great, great, great thing to lean on and with. Plus, they've proven over and over that they can build anything that you imagine. Mm -hmm. What? Like, that's, that's a dream partnership. That's like, you know, even with that U2 airdrop that happened uh, however long ago with Apple on the other end, like, in my mind, I was like, I was geeking out. I always geek out on marketing. Like, I've broken the internet a few times. I've made people go viral. I understand how these algorithms work to a good extent, and I know how to beat the algorithm, which is why I do IRL events. But yeah. the level of direct-to-consumer um, delivery of things now uh, is, is almost, like, regular. Like, it's almost normalized, and when that airdrop happened it wasn't so much and i think that had more like had android and, and more um more environments utilize that type of distribution mm -hmm. tactic more frequently it would have taken off like wildfire and it would be a new norm just like uh text blasts aren't necessarily they're, they're still kind of clunky and it's an opt-in and there's layers to it but Right. Now, more than ever, like the word airdrop, I'm hearing more and more and more. And, and we're finding unique ways of repurposing the uses of all of this stuff. And mm -hmm. I think from just, you know, how many times you go to see a doctor for like 10 minutes just to pick up something and go back home. Like, you know, this is above email, in my opinion. It's just we don't like even there's decentralized wallet to wallet messaging a lot of people sleep on and don't recognize like right. so all the things that we've learned before from chat rooms and AOL and Yahoo and um, you know standalone standalone websites like GeoCities and things of that nature way back then um, you know we're and I'll speak for myself 
I'm over the Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and WordPress, right? I come from Bloghouse era and had multiple platforms that allowed for people like Gatronada and Pokemonsta and Selection and people to submit and then get published and then that bring traffic back to them, but it was always traffic back to social media. Now they don't even need to submit to me because they can submit themselves into their own world and have layers of it, create a whole universe, create a whole planet yeah. around, a whole solar system around themselves. We see people replacing websites with spatial and it's so exciting. Absolutely. Um, I want to ask, so the this space... We are have we have like a virtual version that people can access in the metaverse, but of course this is also a real life event. You guys both host real life events. What do you think is go going to be the reality of how the metaverse and real life events operate? Do you think that it makes sense to have duplicates? Do you think that it'll be one or the other? How are you thinking about the metaverse? I think it'll go both ways. Um, the manager. Uh, He's my friend. His name is Rami. He's Teflon Sega's manager. He was showing me a place here yesterday in New York called uh, Net Zero. This is incredible. Like, the way they can create spaces is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he was just showing me some of the things that they did there. And I, I don't see any reason why things can't ha happen simultaneously either, right? If you're doing, uh, if I'm doing a small show at my club with 200 people and I'm broadcasting it out to the world, um, I can broadcast the real life version on YouTube or Twitch or any other streaming platform and I can also create a metaverse version if I want. Um, different people enjoy things in different ways. Some people want to play football on the grass field and some people want to stay home and play John Madden football on their console. Um, they're both fans of football but they experience football in two different ways and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I, and some people might play football on their console and then go out after Thanksgiving dinner and go play football again on the grass field, right? Yeah. Or vice versa. So who's to say what consumption model is the one that excites people? I just think that uh, when you make things available, you allow the people to choose what excites them. And I think that's the most important thing is giving people a choice. And I, I really believe that from web one to web two to web three, all we've done with technology is just given people more access and more choices. Um, even things like Instagram, uh, Vine, Periscope, like all these things that have transpired in the last 10, 15 years have given people access to broadcast their voice in a way that we've never been able to do. You are usually at the mercy of publications like the New York Times and CNN and things of that nature for your information. Right. And now we're not, it's, that's not the case. Um, and the way we ungated those things, we can choose to do the same thing in Web3. We can gate it or ungate it. But it's up to people how they want to choose to do it. But we have the technology to empower people now that we've never had before, which is amazing. So to, in short, uh, I see no reason why it can't be both one or the other. Just, just people's choice. You have choices now. Definitely. And having a choice is so liberating. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. The power of choice is, is everything. I, I think, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not mutually exclusive. And the the beauty of it is I see in, in huge lights and awnings uh, accessibility. And when I think about accessibility, I think about when I had a near fatal car accident and I was on bed rest for two and a half years and I was used to throwing two to five events per month every month and rapping and DJing and hosting and speaking and blah, blah, blah and not being able to do any of that because I was bed I was on bed rest. And I had, uh, I had a traumatic aortic rupture, both rib cages fractured, hip replacement, all of this. Yeah. Had to go from walker, wheelchair, crutches, all of it, just rehabilitation and recovery process. And because my options were limited between the internet and gaming consoles and Netflix and Hulu and whatever, it was like, like reading books, listening to music. There was only so much that I could do. But when I realized how inaccessible a lot of things were in this world, if you were in a wheelchair or you have some uh, chronic illness or, or pain or something that prevents you from operating or existing uh, and living your best life, you know, I think that this 
there's this that that side of it's also extremely appealing to me it, it reminds me of like when i was like 16 to 20 making money playing uh massive multiplayer online role-playing games like everquest and world of warcraft and then bringing people into chat rooms and charging them a dollar per head to listen to me freestyle rap for hours and do prank calls <laughs> um so you know now i like a, a kid that's that's stuck inside and depressed and upset and anxious can communicate and catch that show and it doesn't have to be some static multi-camera streaming experience it gets to be immersive it gets to be building relationship and rapport with people from all over the world and when this technology is adopting um multiple foreign languages and being able to be received in places that barely have water and power and internet um and it can be a place to congregate and change your life because of the people and things that you can get introduced to. I think that's the beauty of it. And I've been integrating AR and VR and XR in all of my warehouse parties for the past four or five years. I've always projected visuals on the walls mm -hmm. that are tied to CGI and 3D artists. I've had Fuck Render and a lot of these guys on my shows in the past 10 years. But the bottom line is that um, now we're finally at a point that everybody understands what we're doing and I don't have to tell them to do something because they see a QR code and they scan it and they see what pops up and then they mm -hmm. interact with it and then they go to the door and tell me that passphrase and they get their gift back. So I think it just allows you to, again, have limitless potential and um, break down the walls, the doors, the ceiling, the floor and add layers onto your IRL experiences. Every festival should have some alternative option that might be a VIP ticket, might not be, might be token gate, it might not be, mm -hmm. to let people at home experience something similar that couldn't afford the ticket right. or the flight or the hotel and more. Like, why, like, green room backstage, VIP meet and greet is cool, but being able to jump into the metaverse experience and have that one-on-one -on -one time and it allowing you to rock your own virtual wearables and have its downloadable content and like you know that's what i fuck with i think that's that's yeah, i think it all came it. from the gaming world nobody gives gaming enough never right? because gaming has been ahead of everybody so long think think yeah. about like it's just, i i think it's because we've we've put in like <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but I will. I, I think it's revenge of the nerds, right? I mm -hmm. think it's like finally being a geek or being a nerd or, or being savvy, which like those names had stigmas, much like the dark web was shady and Silk Road and mm -hmm. drugs and sex and violence and all that. You know, now we're at a point where I think we're mature enough to have the conversation that geeking out over shit and really just being a specialist or an expert at something because you're so engrossed in it is like, oh, it's cool yeah. that you're passionate and you're an enthusiast and you can tell me every single fucking thing about how this came to be. Yeah, look at all these blockchain nerds hanging out doing you know? cool stuff. <laughs> but, that's, but that's the bridge, right? Because like, we're in industries where the cool kid wins. We're in industries where, um, you know, how many bands do you have and how many whips and cribs do you have and are you at the yacht party with xyz abc that you know the guy that might not have the best style or <clears throat> might be socially awkward or, or the girl that's a little introverted and, and can't find her voice or a platform like now they have that and they can compete and be side by yeah. side or even above the people that have the stardom and the fame and people are getting like the fact that i was even i was in gq um in march and I was in GQ for the future of fashion and metaverse wearables and things of that nature. And I was like, it's funny that I can be in Rolling Stone because of cryptocurrency. I can be in GQ because of metaverse fashion. I can be in um, all these other publications that typically I wouldn't be able to break through. I'm speaking at schools that I used to sneak into, you wow. know, going to MBA programs and being able to express to youth the, the value of this, but then also trying to pull the professors aside and the teachers aside and be like, better get on this before they do. Right. Because you're going to need each other one way or another, but you don't want to be left out of the conversation. You don't want to be the last to the table. And that's where, you know, it's important to teach elderly um, new technology and youth old technology and bridge that. 
And right. now we're having those conversations and it's really, really important and extremely powerful and inspiring. Truly, truly. And thank you guys so much for like talking about this because we can get your coins and your parties <laughs> and we can build it in the metaverse and we can have people who are shy join in VR. We can have people sure. in third world countries join on their phones and we can all be doing a really amazing great stuff with this community with both of your communities and yeah we gotta do a collab party project let's metaverse it activation it. it's gonna happen yeah, let's <laughs> make it happen the collab is the way of the world now exactly when i saw versace and fendi collab <laughs> fendachi i was like <laughs> if they can collab anybody can collab let's right. make it happen and do your own research is yeah. your sister brand um, yeah <laughs> new friendship tech in san francisco spatial has another office there uh, you guys okay. have an office in San Francisco? Mm -hmm. yeah, let's make there it happen. You go. I'll make yeah. it happen. Let's make it happen. You know, I'm, I'm with it. I got asked to do a product hunt party, and I was just like, eh. But I think a spatial empire, new friendship yeah. tech party sounds like the vibe that yeah, I have. Let's make it happen. Yeah, let's make it happen. I love it. Bet. Appreciate well, your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you guys so, so much for your time, for coming here, hanging out at Samsung with us, and really, really appreciate you both. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.